Hello everyone, this is Danny from the DM Art Classes. Today I'm going to be taking a look at this new app called Nomad Sculpt. This is something which I have recently done in it. It's one of my 2D weapon concepts. Decided to bring it to life as a way of doing a, a test run with this app. I have to say I absolutely love this app. It's brilliant. The fact that you can sit on your iPad and create something like this with ease is just it's great news. It's really good. So th this is my first ever tutorial video, so please have a bit of patience with me. But what I'll do is I'll run over the, the interface and basic fun functions of Nomad Sculpt so you can then get started sculpting things yourself. One finger to rotate, two fingers to pan, and pinch to zoom, like that. So if we go to this top corner here, this is your first menu bar. This is the projects bar. For example, you can save, save as, open, add, new, and delete. So if I press the save button, save export, say yes, and it will just save automatically. Oh. Or if you do the save as, you'll see here, I have some previous files, uh, the plus icon, you press that, and it will give you an option to save a new file, and then you can name it. I don't need to do that because it's already done. Project auto save menu. So here you have your limit size. So for example, my estimated size is over 300 megabyte, but it's set at 20 megabytes. So that means any, once your file becomes bigger than the limit size, the auto save function will then switch off. So if you increase that, then it'll just auto save for you. That can be really good. If you are working on a a project or anything it's a good habit just save 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 all the time especially when you're working with 3d okay so here you've got open add so for example for the import menu i can actually add previous models which i've sculpted into my scene here you can import obj and other 3d files as well also here you can export your file, so you have a STL, this will take you straight into ZBrush, OBJ, this um, also as well, I, I recently had experience with this, um, I was moving this axe over to ZBrush and I exported my OBJ and it had the color information and then you got GLTF as well for exporting. This one was good when I wanted to take it into Blender and it had my vertex uh, colors as well. So yep, render, transparent background, I'll show you an example. So press transparent background, export PNG, and boom, it's like that. Press done, and you can save that to where you want. Let's open that menu back up. You can change your resolution as well. You can also have the option of show the UI, export PNG. So this will just show exactly what's on your screen. And uh, settings, reset to default. So if you change anything and you get a little confused, like, ah, what have I done? You just press reset to default and material library reset to default the same as well. So this is your scene menu. For example, here, I, I have all these separate objects on the axe. I have the handle, the hair, the straps, the cylinders here etc and they're all here so you can go through uh, your scene menu and hide different objects let me hide these so that's you press the i icon to hide just like that and then you can unhide boom 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 i will recommend that you rename your object files i should have done done it in this but I didn't, but it's so much easier when you name them and you know exactly what you're going for. So for example, here you've got a pen icon, you just press on that, and then you have the option to put a name in. And you just type your name of what you want. So you have the sort of cross icon just next to the pen. If you press that, you can move your subtool up or down to wherever you want it. The uh, garbage can icon is to delete, and then the next icon with the two squares is uh, duplicate. Okay, now, so for example, just below all my objects in the scene menu here, I have the multi selection. So if I press this on, I can select different ones, and then I have the option to merge the mesh meshes. 
so I can merge them together. If I voxel merge, then this will merge them together, but also remesh them. It will join the objects together like this. So if, I, if you have too many objects, say, for example, I have a, you know, like I want to merge the handle and the head of the axe together, then I can just merge them and then it's easier to go around. It is nice to have things separately. I, I like having things separately for when I'm texture painting. Anyway, but we'll get to that later. So a viewport selection, the one below. So this can be really useful. So for example, let me just switch this setting on so you can see better. Uh, just so you know what I'm doing, I'm going to the outline selection. And this will just, th this is just for this purpose of this tutorial. It's when I click on something, you'll see the red outline. So viewport selection, when you have that selected, I can click with my pen anywhere on the screen and it will select the different objects. As you can see, it's going through on my scene menu, like this. Now, that can be good, but sometimes when you're sculpting, it will be sculpting and your pen will go onto the other object and it will select the other object. But say if you don't want to do that, you just unclick viewport selection. And then you see, when I click on the screen, it, it just remains on that one object. So you can click that on and off. Okay, and then this last menu, really important, the primitive menu. So for example, I'll show you here. What I can do is I can add a box, a sphere, blah, 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 all of these primitives here. So when you're building your objects, I've just added a sphere there. You just click the pen on the screen to move it around like this. And when, when you have your object where you want it to be, you just press at the bottom, bottom here it says validate so I can press validate and then that means it is in that it's there in that area and to move it around you just put your pen on the screen you click and you just move it here so I'll, I'll run through this now while I'm in this menu if I add this object in here okay so it's in your scene okay let's say I want to move this to go on the handle of the axe on the right hand side here in this menu, you have your different movement tools. Right now on move, you can just uh, click with your pen and move it around like this, easy peasy, but uh, you can't rotate or anything like that. The next one is rotate. So you click on the object and you can move it around like this. This one I find a little bit hard to have. Well, you can have control, but but yeah, it's uh, you've sort of got to move around. And the next icon is the scale. So you click on your item, you pull out to expand and in to shrink like this. But the gizmo icon, which is the one I use most of the time. So, for example, I can see exactly what axis I'm going to be rotating on. This outer ring on your gizmo will scale. So if you click on the outer ring, pull out and pull in will scale your object like this this one uh, the inner ring if you click if you click on the red part this will rotate into that area this square uh, just next to it the red square you can then move the arrow up is up arrow side side etc so let's say if i want to put this on the handle just below Let's boom, snap to view this uh, camera icon in the bottom. So let me scale this down. But also as well, sorry, I have to mention this. These squares, where the green arrow is, you have a square above it. This will scale it to that direction. As you can see, I'm pulling up. It's making it bigger that way. Also, the same applies for the red one here. I scale it this way. And then I can scale it to that axis as well. Like this so for example let's make this like a handle boom there we go so that's it and then after I can press validate and that's it it's in my scene and I have all my brush menu back now the uh, movement menu is gone but you can always go back as you can see here on the side menu you have your gizmo icon at the bottom and uh, your transform tools just there